Are you recording this? Hey, good morning, everyone. I welcome back to my YouTube channel. So the question uh, for this morning today is Sunday, and um, I saw I start watching a lot of video on SoFi, and you're probably gonna see a video uh, me making SoFi why I bought SoFi stock. So let me just show you real quick. I I own a lot of SoFi stocks right now. Um, I'm I'm gonna get more as long as they're hovering around six dollars and seventy four cents. I'm going to keep buying more. Now, why does a high-yield dividends investor buy into SoFi? Uh, it's the same reason, same question, why does a high-yield dividend investor buy into Tesla? Uh -huh. You have to believe in the stock. If you believe in it, and then, then you buy it. So I have a lot of T, uh, Tesla, for example. I have a lot. I have TSLT, TSLL, TSLP, TSLY. Uh, so pretty much anything to Tesla that's generating leverage or dividends I pretty much own it all right because I believe in the in the underlining uh, stocks now SoFi does not have SoFi it's doesn't have yield Mac doesn't cover SoFi okay but the reason why I believe in SoFi is not for that they have other ETF out there uh, the biggest thing that I love about SoFi is actually SYI okay and uh, Oh, is it SYI? Oh, wrong, wrong, wrong font. I forgot what it was. It's the it's the S and P five hundred index. All right, I actually love that. Uh, yeah, SY SFY. That's it. I I just this is the one. This this thing is it's only sixteen dollars. Think about it. it's very cheap. And then, uh, but you're essentially owning the the S and P five hundred. A lot of uh, and then I love the TGIF, which is a weekly income, and weekly, uh, and uh, and then WKLY, which is two weekly income, uh, which is they're all good. Uh, but it's just the price is high. If the price was around ten twenty dollar, I will buy it like it's Kool Aid. I will buy it like it's Kool Aid. But it's just it's a hundred dollar, you know, ninety five dollar and forty six dollar. For ninety five dollar, I can buy other type of dividends that generate more more yield than. Than TGIF than any of these, so that's the only that's the only reason. But as a as a dividend investor, I love it. You know, you 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 have to have passion for these things, and so I you know a lot of a lot of you here. I'm in Tesla all the time, and I'll stop high yield, high yield. But you know, dividend investor love all spectrum. As long as you're making money, as long as you're generating income, I'm gonna love it. And and it, so. THTA is the newest one, SoFi Enhanced Yield ETF. Uh, I read it, I love it, I watch a whole bunch of YouTube video on it, and everybody's talking about it. And but I have a lot of questions, and I so I'm going to show you the fun homepage. And the very first question, that's why Claude is here, is it went, and this is literally what happened to me with Tesla. I didn't know anything about option trading, I didn't know anything. So when I look at Tesla, I read the their fund objective. The very first sent, the first two sentence, I didn't know what it means. They said, you know, they're going to generate uh, income based on option tr uh, trading and synthetic cover call option trading, something like, something like that. And I, I have no idea what that means. I was like, what does that mean? Well, I'm at the same point here for for SoFi. So let's go look at this. Where is? Uh... Okay, here we go. Generate income. That's the first thing I always look at an ETF. How does the ETF make money? They do they make money from the dividends? They make money from growth? Do they make money combined? Do they make money from cover call? From you know zero day trading or whatever the ODTE is? And then or they make money on you know various things out there that I've seen I've seen now up to this this point. Well, I have never seen this. This is the first time I've seen this. So this is why I'm, that's why I got Claude here, got Brian here, got a whole bunch of people who would love to talk about this uh, strategy here. So let me read it. Generate income. The strategy seeks to generate income by holding short duration U.S. Treasury without material interest rates while capturing enhanced income by selling volatility premium using high probability defined risk option spread. All right. This is a very mouthful one sentence. This is in my opinion, it's a very poor written uh, uh, way to define this. They should they should hire the people, the the lawyer who write for Yield Max. They should let them write this uh, because it's easier for for a new investor like me.
to figure it out. So let's just break it down, and I'm going to turn it over to Claude to explain me the last sentence, option spread. I literally have no idea what it means. All right. The strategy seek to generate income, so the ETF is an income ETF, which is good, by holding short-duration U.S. Treasury without material interest risk. All right, so this here, short-duration U.S. Treasury, not what they're buying, <clears throat> potentially short-duration uh, one-year Treasury. You know, they're not owning 10-year Treasury or 20-year Treasury, so they're owning one year or less, okay? And then while capturing enhanced income by selling volatility premium. So they're doing option trading. But the type of option trading they do is option spread. That's how I interpret it right now. They're not doing like what Tussie does, which is synthetic cover call. They're not doing like what Clips does, selling cover call on the money. But they're doing something called option spread, which I did try to Google it, and I tried to read it, and I was more confused about it. So with that, Claude, are you able to dumb this down for, for a new investor? Yeah, sure. So so if they're, like, that, like the statement says, by selling volatility, okay, this is what pretty much, if you think about the Tesla, if you want to compare it to Tesla, which they do the same thing, selling volatility. But in this case, if they're doing option spreads, they're doing something known at probably known as a credit spread. And the thing about a, a credit spread, just to keep it simple, is you're buying one option and you're selling another option within the same expiration period, two different strike prices. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to do this for simplistic sake. Let's just say that you went out in your yard one day, right? And uh, you found a dollar bill, okay? And you put that dollar bill in your pocket. And later on that day, you take those pants off and you put them in the washing machine without checking your pockets. What's going to happen? you're gonna realize that that dollar bill you stuck in your pocket pretty much got disintegrated in the wash, okay? Now, during that same day, let's just say you go back out into your yard again and you find some more money. You find a $5 bill, okay? Now, what happens is you would think that in layman's terms, that you found pretty much $6 for the course of the day. Which technically you did, but when you look at the net of everything, you're only up four dollars. So, how does that simple analogy translate into an option spread or credit spread, as they call them? Sometimes uh, old schoolers like to refer to them as verticals, or sometimes they may be known as bull put spreads or bear call spreads depending on which side of the, the market you're on, whether you're going up or going down. So basically what happens is, <clears throat> and let me pull up a, an options chain of SoFi. And as I look at SoFi on a week, it's not looking too good, but let me just, let's just go out to December the 1st expiration. And SoFi right now is trading at $6.83. And I would say in the short term, so far, I look like it's in a downtrend. So if it's in a downtrend, let's just say that I want to collect premium using the credit spread on SoFi. So if I was doing this, I would, and let's see, Kamir, you mind if I share my screen real quick? I am recording. I don't mind you sharing, but I want you to be aware that um, I, you have okay, any personal yeah, okay. information. Let me know. I got, I, I can, I got I can, we have to we have to send no, it. No, no, no. No, keep it rolling. Keep it rolling because all I'm about to do is bring us some charts to give a visual of, all right. of, of what I'm talking about. All right, yeah, share the information, yeah. but I, I, I want to protect you because... Be aware of that, yeah. I, right. I got you. I appreciate that. All right. All right, so let me share this real quick. 
Like, if I don't tell you that, there, there's one dude, I, I, you know, I yeah. tell him that, and then he show it. I said, hey, dude, uh, I, you know, it's not live broadcast to YouTube, you know, to, to the, the internet, but I don't know everybody in this room, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let, so let me know if you see these two generic charts of SoFi on your screen. All right, where, where do you put it, though? Oh, right, I'm, I'm clicking yeah. on it. Right, yeah. Give me a second. Okay. Um, let me switch over so everybody mm -hmm. else can see it, too. All oh, right, it's not loading for me. I might have to disable my. So let me let me. I didn't pay for the server, so let me stop watching my. Does that make a? Give me a second. Okay. Why? It's just it's just loading. Does anybody else see his screen? Because for me, it's just loading. Uh, yeah. You all can see it? No. Yeah, it's just loading, uh, Claude. Okay. Um, it, that right, means that mean you're selecting Claude. the wrong screen uh, or, or the wrong window. Stop sharing and try it again. Try yeah. it again. Yeah, yeah stop sharing, again. try again, and you may share. You, you must have selected the wrong window or something. Okay. Uh, let's try this here. All right, I can see it now. All right, there we go. All right, let me. Uh, uh, it should be two, two, two right, generic charts. Side. All right, let me switch. Switch. Yes, screen. I can see two charts. Okay. Give me a second. I got to switch screen on my end. Okay. All right, so I can see it now. Yep, we all see. Go ahead. I'm going to edit all this portion okay. now. All right, go ahead. Okay. It's good. So, so basically, this is SoFi. And, and let's just say, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're the fund managers, and we're going to be doing credit spreads on, on SoFi. So, you know, we can see that in the short term. You know, we're in, we're in a real short term downtrend here. And, you know, what you see on the chart is basically – these channels that's set up by deviations, okay? Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm doing this is because this is how I actually trade Tesla when it comes to credit spreads myself. Mm -hmm. So let's just say we look at SoFi in the short term and we can say, all right, uh, if you can see where my cursor is, you see this here purple line that's blinking as yep. I'm hovering over it. That's basically the mean, okay? You start talking about average prices over a period of time. Mm -hmm. That's where the SoFi stock likes to reside at. The first black line that goes above that is one standard deviation. And the red dotted line that's above that is two standard deviation. Okay. Right. So what happens is SoFi will say, and however their perspective is, whether it's, you know, 1% from the price action, out of the money, whatever it may be, uh, they determine how close they want that spread. But let's just say, for example, uh, where this here blue dot is, I like to do spreads two standard deviations out because that's where the stock price most of the times is not going to go in that short period of time. OK, so let's just say that the stock right now is trading at 683 and two standard deviations definitely is about that seven dollar and fifty cent price range. Mm -hmm. OK. So what I would do as a spread trader is I would look at that options chain. And if I'm going to take a peek at two standard deviations outside of that range, like I said, I quoted somewhere around that $7.50 range. What I'm going to be looking at is, okay, that $7.50 strike price right now is going for, this is December 1st, is going for, let's say, 11 cents. Okay. Now. What that means is that I'm going to pay 11 cents per contract for that specific strike price. Now, this is combined with an option that I'm going to be buying. And let's just say we go with the 850. OK, so what happens is I would purchase in this here credit spread. 
you would pay out of your pocket. Now, think about this mathematically. You would pay out of your pocket four cents, okay? But it's eight fifty, and then you would turn around and sell the seven fifty, which is a dollar spread, a dollar difference, at eleven cents. So that eleven cents minus four cents is basically what we don't do. Eleven minus four, seven cents to the credit. Okay. At this point, we're all familiar with the terms credits when we're dealing with cover calls and things like that. So basically what that means is that for that $1 spread, that credit would be worth seven cents of income coming in. That's the income so that collected. So that, the income you collect is, would, would be seven, seven cents, cents times however many spreads that they're selling. Mm -hmm. Okay. They they essentially they essentially make money on the premium income on the the seven cents which you in your example which is this yeah, spread, the, the the contract yep. price yep. essentially yep. the contract price yep and that would mean that at this blue dot right here the price could bounce around anywhere it want to. But as long, long as it doesn't go above where this blue dot is, price-wise, then you receive that entire full seven cents of credit. Yeah. Now, okay, so why would somebody buy that contract? So... What's the advantage of it? The advantage of this here is if, let's say, for some people who have individual accounts... You have these trading authorities, yeah. right? These trading levels, trading abilities, however you want to, however you want to word it. Some people can't sell options flat out. So you have to have some type of collateral in the account. In this case, the collateral would be the 750 that you purchased. So right. what that means, if you get in trouble. If you get in trouble, everybody has heard the term of selling options naked, right? Yep. Which, you know, the risk of that can, can really be devastating. The situation where you have a spread and you have the other side of that spread means that if the broker needs to exercise, they can turn around and exercise and purchase that lower strike price and then turn around and deliver at that higher strike price. I know that sounds like a lot, but that is the protection piece of a spread trade. Oh, so if I'm, I'm the I'm the guy who buying it. So uh, I obviously I can buy it at seven thirty six, not seven fifty. But I can buy any time any price there. And then what protect me if if the if the price jumped to 850 like you said in your example or which greater. Is, yeah it is or greater it will protect me because i already own it what yeah yeah now what will happen is i don't get it you know, i, I own 736 why 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 did it matter why would i care well the strike, the strike price would be uh the strike price would be the 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 lower so yeah. the thing is Depending on, like I said, depending on how the, the the your trading level is set up, yeah. Because we have individuals in here that can sell options naked, mm -hmm. so it, it wouldn't matter. They if they if if they're well capitalized, then they can just come up with the cash. Yeah. But if you're in a situation where, you know, you don't have that capitalization, you don't have that trading level. Yeah. Then what the broker will do is. And and you'll see it in your account if it ever went down like that at at at, at the uh, expiration time frame, mm -hmm. you will see where the transactions happen, and you will take assignment on one side, and then you'll see the delivery on the other side, almost like within the same transaction. So it's it's just a protection piece for the individual that's doing it for themselves. Yeah. Now that's that's the credit spread. The debit spread is where 
you're paying for you still have that that same strike price difference which is the the difference between the spread itself mm -hmm. the distance of the spread so on the flip side you can actually let's just say you purchase a specific strike price and you use another strike price to sell against it to help offset that cost And see, that's a debit spread. So in case of uh, someone who wants to purchase a debit spread, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to throw some rudimentary numbers out there, you may buy an option at $5, and you may sell an option at $3, which means you only have $2 invested in that spread. But that's $2 coming out of your out of your pocket to pay for that. And the maximum that you can earn is the distance between that spread. So for example, where I use the $5 price that you pay for that option, let's just say that's a $50 option, strike price, okay? And you sell <clears throat> that other option that's at, let's just say uh, $55. And you sell that at three. So what that means is basically you have that five dollar spread, which is the maximum that you can you can earn if it goes above that, if it violates that that specific strike price. Because you only have two dollars vested in it, which gives you a maximum of upside of three dollars. That's a debit spread. But in the case of SoFi and the product that they're selling, they're going to be doing, probably going to be doing the credit spread to bring income in. Yeah. The one thing I don't I don't like about our strategy is the ideal way to capture all those gains is the stock has to move sideways. If it blows above your strike price, you probably get a sign or below the strike price, you yeah. probably get a sign. That's the one reason yeah. I don't like this. It's a, it's, a, it's a good strategy when you have a stock that is that barely moves, like these dividend stocks mm -hmm. that pay income, they barely move. So you can play credit spread for like a whole year and you, you capture all the gains, something like that. But for that to work, the way so far moves, like one week out of, one day out of the week, you can just blow through and you can lose like all your gains that you made for the past weeks. It's, that's the one thing I don't like about that strategy. Absolutely. So to put it put it in perspective, oh, sorry. Brian, saying, I want to say something. I, I think he just yeah. I'm trying to figure out if they're trading so far or SPX. So they're not telling me what they're trading. But the general thesis of this one is they're going to do way out of the money on the, on the spreads. Probably a ten as far as Delta out outside ten to twenty thirty maybe. And I don't know if they're trading so far or SPX or what because they're not giving me that information. No, I think, think, I, think I don't think they're using SPX. They're I think not they... saying they're not saying they're trading SoFi. So they're well, doing they're doing they're not specifically saying what they're trading as far as the spread. So until I yeah. I mean I can't I've looked over a perspective and I'm not sure maybe somebody else caught it, but you know I've got it in my hot ABG list. Yeah. So because I love spreads, so that's my cup of tea. My, so, my guess is based on, remember, I started with the video saying that the S P 500, they have their own, they have their own SP 500. My, my, yeah, my guess is they're trading the SPY or SYP or whatever it's called. Yeah. Well, as long as they're not doing an absolute volatile stock like Tesla, they <laughs> might do very well with this. I mean, because you can really, you can really make a lot of money on spreads. I mean, you really can. So yeah. plus they're using short term treasuries. Yeah. And they're conservative enough. You catch the upside when the market goes up. So, guess uh, who? Guess who's the the advisor, the fund manager for this? Zecca Group. Guess guess who owns Zecca Group? Jay. What? Yeah. The, yeah. The, the well, let's target. compare let's compare strategies with Jay then, uh -huh. since Claude was was doing it. Mm -hmm. So he does a synthetic call. What you're doing with a call spread? Let's use Tesla as an example. Yeah. Say Tesla's at two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna go out thirty days, and he's gonna do a spread credit spread. Mm -hmm. a call okay we call it a call so he's gonna go out there and pick a strike probably 10 out of the money which might be a 230 
two hundred to say he's going to do a two thirty strike. Okay, thirty days out, or we can go higher than that, two fifty if you want to be real conservative. So he's going to pick that strike at two fifty, and he's going to go up the option chain and look for either a two fifty five or two sixty, or even maybe a two seventy, and he's going to buy that call. So what you have, <clears throat> what you have going on is the difference between the two strikes is the amount of capital you have to put up to uh, to to do the trade. So if he does a twenty, that's twenty. That's that's two thousand dollars per contract. So two fifty, and then two seventy is the buy. So there's a difference of two thousand dollars between the two. So they might can do with the amount of money they have coming in, they could do multiple contracts <clears throat> at that strike with less collateral. So <clears throat> they could roll in a ton of money on that spread, and and that's why I like it because I like spreads. But, you know, the only thing that I think, you know, it's a 30-day trade, if that's what they're doing. It can get a little iffy if you go 30 days out with, like, Tesla, but not the SPY. You know, if they're, if they're running the 500, yeah, you could do pretty well with that, especially in this market. So, I mean, that's my, and that's what I'm thinking about. So that's why I'm looking at it real hard, and I'm going to watch it real close because that's my cup of tea. And if they do it right, then that, that might be something I want to do, so. Yeah, I, that's too early, and they're in diapers right now, and they're yeah. not giving me enough information to really meet, latch on. Maybe that's proprietary, and they don't want to tell everybody how they're doing it, because that's the only one I know of that really uses spreads right now. It's a new product, so. But spreads, yeah, so, so game, my, you know, based on that options chain I just showed you, sure. seven cents, uh, per contract on the credit. For the amount of risk, this just for that one dollar spread is not worth it. So yeah, no, like you said, no, I don't. If they so doing it on something else, that might that'll you know paint a different picture. That's why I'm saying I'm waiting to see what they're playing. I'm mm -hmm. I need to know what ETF they're working or whatever you know. Yeah, so that's what I'm waiting on because I don't have enough information in there to know if they're trading the you know super volatile. But yeah. they got in the perspective it's conservative. As far as what they have in that little sentence, that, that paragraph you had right there, that was pretty conservative as far as what they wanted, how they want to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was looking at, and it didn't look like they were trading when they said uh, enhanced by selling volatile premiums using high prob probability defined risk option spreads. So they're looking out, you know, they're looking out at some of these, and and they're going low on the on the deltas. So you know. That's what I'm reading, but I want to see how they do it first, you know. But it's on my hot list, hot ABG list for sure. Because so. I like spread. I mean, I just love them. So, but like I said, if you do if you do a spread, you can use uh, they, you know for smaller portfolios, they do, they love using spreads because they use less collateral to make money because you don't have to buy you don't have to put up the whole stock price to do multiple contracts. So. Your only obligation is in between the strikes. So between the, the sell call and the buy call, your obligation is the distance between the strikes. So if you do a 250, 270, your two grand per contract is how much that your liability is if you're in the strike. So in, in the money. So you can only lose two grand. So without being assigned. So you so you, you close you close the bottom leg and actually if it's still blowing you can leave the top leg open and make money off the top leg too. Yep. So, yep. So you you have options in that, you know, and you usually don't get busted on stuff like that because you can roll out of it real easy or just close it. So the risk factor to me is very low unless it's a crazy, what I call a crazy Asian baby girl stock. So you know. Yeah. You know. So. No, you probably you probably you probably the crazy blonde Asian girl. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right on, man. Right on. But, no, yeah, it's, it's there, there, there's nothing. Uh, there's there's some this crazy Asian girl, but then when you when you add the crazy Asian blonde that dyed yeah, hair blonde, you're up there. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's yeah. that's next level craziness. That's next level, right? You yeah, know, and, yeah, yeah. But I'm real interested, and Claude probably is too. He's gonna watch it. He, I know he's gonna watch it because it looks like they hiding a lot of stuff. But I don't know if it's proprietary or what. You know, yeah. I don't know what they're doing right now. So. so I'm watching so far very closely, and um, well, I, I appreciate guys. Uh, yeah. If you ask me to repeat what everything you said, um, I know I, that's I okay. An... We've been doing it a long time over <laughs> here. That's different now. 
you'll yeah. learn this over the years. Okay? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you more because I think this is interesting, another income portfolio. So you got you got uh, Clip doing cover call on the money, and then you got Tesla who do synthetic cover call uh, with right. 15, 5 to 15% out of the money, and then you got uh, Defiance doing ODT, and now you potentially have SoFi doing spread, which is totally another form of it is. It, it it option is. trading, income trading. So that that's the, now you diversify based on if you were to buy into this. You, now you diversify based on different type of strategy. Now you know, <clears throat> not just fun, but you diversify based on on income strategy uh, on how they make money. Yeah. So I I I really enjoy. Uh, uh, this, am I gonna buy it? Not right away. Uh, would, me either. It, me either. Yeah, I'm it's it, it, it's yeah. twenty dollar, which is a good price. Like twenty five dollar, I'm not even gonna buy it. Like I'm just gonna unless it's unless it's Tesla, like uh, TSL uh, TSLP. I bought at twenty five dollar, so I I have no problem because it's Tesla. I believe in it. <laughs> the problem is I don't know what they're doing this on. Uh, let's just like what Brian said. So far, yeah. enhanced yield ETF. There's no holding right now. And they're not yeah. publishing it, so we yeah. don't know what are they doing spread on. They're doing spread on on their own so far, or they're doing spread on. Um, I mean, there could be any a number of uh, SYI uh, so far select 500 ETF. That's the the 500 ETF that, uh, and then you got the the next, which is the mid cap, uh, and then you got the the social 50. I, I still don't know what the social 50 is. Brand new. And then, or they could pick any one of these. I have no idea. Or they could do neither, and then it's just a curveball. We need more. Information. Yeah, if they if they can do multiple stocks, are they just tied to one? Are they yeah. tied? Are they can do others or a combination of others? Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. That's why you know it's like four days old, right? It's not even in diapers yet. Yeah. So you know, it's a baby. So, yeah, so that's why I say I never get into babies till I see some performance and some money. You know, I want to see what you're doing. So, yeah, yeah. Paul is probably the same way. He's looking at it, but if they can beat me what I'm at my own game, I'd definitely be interested in it, you know. Now I will say this. Yeah. I know we have all seen uh the the quote unquote growth calculators yeah. that people will do. Yeah. As far as you know, you start off with ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. And yeah. you know, in one year you can have this, that, and the other. Now, if you learn credit spreads on your own. Those growth curves that you see in those Excel examples uh -huh. are a lot more accurate with credit spreads than they are with cover calls. Okay. For one simple reason. A cover call, you're holding some underlying asset that will fluctuate in value. Yeah. Up, down, whatever it may be. A credit spread, when a credit spread goes through and it's and it's done, expired, and you know, you collected your credit, mm -hmm. you are in complete cash. Yep. So when you look at those growth calculators that that's all over YouTube and the internet and stuff like that, and it says month one, you're at this dollar amount, month two, you're at this dollar amount. With a cover call, that can really fluctuate. But with a credit spread, especially if you have targets, let's just say you, you're trying to target 5% per week or you know per month, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. those numbers will be a lot more accurate in those Excel spreadsheets using a cover call strategy because when that credit spread expires or you close it out early at your target, you're going to be in cash and that's not going to fluctuate. Right. So you're not losing anything on the stock price. So yeah. that's the whole thing. Exactly. If stock goes down, you yeah. don't care because mm -hmm. you're just doing a spread. So Tesla could go from say 250 to 200. Well, you just made all that money right up front real quick. So they'll close that and reset or something. You know, it's just it's pretty easy as far as spreads work. The main thing is research the stock and research, you know, technicals on it and then yeah. make your thing, you know, make your play. So if they got a good team, they can they can make a lot of money off of it. They really can. But I like cash settles. You know, when you do spreads, it's all about the cash. It's not all about, right. you know, the stock does whatever it does, but at the end of the day, you just collect the cash and it goes in the bank. So, you know, you just put in the collateral. And somebody in the group, let me see who was that. That was, uh, I'm not sure if it was Raheem, but he said about the sideways action. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, 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 that's a perfect scenario if money. you want to be in the credit spread. Yeah. 
perfect scenario. So yeah, uh, more details well, all we need. Yeah, That's can, all me and Claude needs more detail pretty well, much on what. Let's analyze this real quick here. So this thing is five days old. This is straight up sideway. <laughs> share, share your screen. Share oh, your screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah do fine. that. Cause it's, it's... So in the last five days, it, it opened on November 16th at $20. And then, um, I'm sorry, that's one day. That's five days. Wait, what not? what's going on? Max on there. Put Max. Max. There you go. It's, so essentially, go to, go to one week. Go to the five. No, it's it's only it's only a couple of days. It it came out in November yeah. fifteen. It's only one day old. But, I know, but it'll show yeah. you the movement from stop and oh, from start. Right here, one uh, week. Yeah. So, yeah, his, it's only one day old. It came out in fifteen. So one day, uh, I mean, it didn't it didn't move. It just went four cents. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like I said, it's just right now because it hadn't yeah. done anything. You you check, know, but but done. would would that consider be good from your perspective? Yes. Let's say let's say the yes. whole month. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, if, if, if you if you did a zero day DT a zero DTE, yeah, you come out like a champ on that chart oh, right yeah. there. So yeah. I think it's moved like from if you go back to the beginning where it dropped that yeah. big drop at the beginning. I think yeah. it moved one cent, and that's the drop. Yeah. <laughs> and they calls it, 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 it went one down one penny. Yeah. And they call that a drop. <laughs> you see my point? And you go to the other dip, I think it went down. Yeah. Way down there. What is that? That's two cents. Two yes. cents. Yeah. That's their big drops. Okay. Yeah. So, so it went it went from it went from it, it you know, opened at twenty dollar. Right. And it dropped well, it went up to two uh two it went up two cents actually. So, the low is two cents above yeah, the start price. Yeah, is above it, so it's actually higher than when it first accepted right now. So, yeah, but, yeah, we'll see how this plays out because I'm watching this thing real close. I mean, I am. Yeah, I want to see how the performance is because if it can beat me at my own game, it's worth my time. You know. Okay. Yeah. You know. Uh, th does anybody else want to jump in? I'm going to go ahead and close this video, and uh, I'm going to definitely have to edit a little bit, but. Uh... Oh hey, um, hey first of all, right, th thank you so much, guys. Uh, you know, I I have a basic understanding now, and I kind of love this idea because it's the first one to do this that I, I'm aware of. So, uh, but l like once again, I'm not gonna jump something that just like Brian said that until you get some context. As you see, about a month, I will jump in if it's a happen to be a Tesla because I just it's just my mindset work. We don't know what this thing is based on, so if we don't know the holding. Then, then I'm even more skeptical. So I'm gonna have to wait until it's the informations get populated. Once the information get populated, then I can make a decision on it. Uh, so in the meantime, yeah. So this is this is potential future. Now the only thing I don't like it uh, about the SoFi. Now I can't I cannot assume this, but all the other fund they pay at the end of the month. I don't know when they pay out, but traditionally when one fund pay uh, the beginning, whatever the the pay date. The payday they pick, pretty much all their fund align the same way. So whatever the company pick, they tend to align all the same way. I don't know why company do that, but uh, you know, for that reason, if th t t h t a, so far enhanced yield ETF pay on the end of the month, which is thirty first, thirty and thirty first of the month, well, guess what? Who's competing? They compete against Clip. I, that's that's the reason why I I don't need another fund that I already have a, a, an established fund that's already exists in that time slot for me that can pay. Uh, it competing against CLM, SVOL, uh, competing against CLIP. Uh, it's just a lot of fund that I already own. Now I'm going to add, you know, uh, essentially the six or seven fund into, you know, SoFi into this window. It's it's not sexy for me right now. <laughs> uh, I rather own um, CLIP at $17 vices. Uh, THTA at twenty dollar. Um, that that's just my take on it. Okay, so with that, I, I want to say that I thank you all for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Please comments. Uh, most important comments. I love. If you want to join the discussion, you can see how we have this, these discussion all the time. All you do is click the link below, and that's take you to Discord, and then from there you can have conversation on it. Um, so uh, yeah, just come hang out with us, and we can have a conversation. I'll see you in the next video. Out.